Since the broadcast of Hein Rivlin's investigation on Friday Night Studio, the report has been the talk of the day among parents of small children. Chaim Rivlin, the health correspondent of Channel 2 News, published an investigation showing that babies' feeding bottles made of plastic may possibly leak toxic liquids. When disinfected and rinsed repeatedly, they may be harmful to the baby's health as the released toxins can cause some kind of defect or developmental problem. Ever since the broadcast, worried parents have been showering pediatricians with questions. We're greeting two guests this morning, Professor Tzvi Tzadik, head of the Endo Clinic Department at Kaplan Hospital, and Dr. Tzvi Heller, a pediatrician from Kupat Cholim Leumit. Good morning to you both. Tell me, when someone contacts you and says, listen, I saw the broadcast, I understand there's a problem with some of the plastic bottles, what should I do? What's your reply? First, this is a gross exaggeration. Toxins, reduction in age of puberty, it's all widely exaggerated. I don't think this is what was said on the show. However, people have taken this issue a little further. The report was evenly balanced, and Chaim told the full story. The question is, what impression is left on the viewer? Parents wonder how they should react. Do they contact you and ask what to do, if they should throw all the bottles away or change to glass bottles? I tell people that bisphenol A has the traits of a small amount of female hormone. It shouldn't be present in people, but it is. I don't have any proof that it's harmful, but on the other hand, I don't want to wake up in 20 years and say, it's a shame I didn't know. That's why I'm bringing this to the public's attention and stating that if a person doesn't want this chemical in his child, he should use another product. But I have to point out that this chemical is present in all kinds of plastic bottles, in the inner wrapper of canned products, in all kinds of products that are in daily use. When you say plastic bottles, does that include mineral water bottles? In many products, I don't know the exact composition. At least these bottles aren't scrubbed. They're used once and disposed of. But this is amazing. Actually, what happens, wherever you look, you find substances permitted for use, and they contain... The consequences of using them have not been thoroughly checked. They can be used today, but research will only be available in 20 years. Meanwhile, we consume these products. We don't have to elaborate on what parents are doing to protect their children. The end result, parents are left feeling they may be harming their child. Correct, this is important. Use of all these products began before anyone thought of their possible harmful effects. All these industries came into being before standards were applied. That is what is so troublesome. Correct. That's why I say that all new preparations being used should be thoroughly checked. Dr. Heller, at the end of the day, you're the one who has to deal with people. I mean, some people handle the substances, do the research, but you have to deal with a parent who wants to know what he should do. It happens. There's no real panic, but there is an inherent anxiety. On the one hand, they must understand that this substance is not really toxic and there's no need to panic. But on the other hand, better safe than sorry. Right now, I'm suggesting that people should not use bottles containing the substance if they're old, if they've been passed down from older children, used for many years, or undergone many sterilization cycles. Define many. There are parents like Donna that sterilize a bottle five or six times for every use just to be sure it's safe. Donna and my wife, too. That's how it is. I don't have any specific definition. Perhaps Professor Tzadik has, I don't know, but definitely if a bottle is defective, scratched, or murky, it's likely that it will release bisphenol A 10 or 20 times more. Does a new bottle also release the substance? The substance is used as a stabilizing agent in plastic, causing the plastic to remain resilient. From here, it's simply a question of physical and chemical reactions. Any physical or chemical stimulus to the bottle will cause the release of a certain amount of the substance. That means if you sterilize a new bottle, you're already causing of the release course. of... If you heat it, if you heat a can of food, the substance is released into the food inside. 
How long has this fact been known? How long have you known about this? Many years. Many years, because in response to our inquiry, the Ministry of Health informs us that they recommend changing bottles as they grow old and not transfer them to younger children. They also recommend not to use scratched or torn bottles. The Ministry will examine all international recommendations and make additional recommendations as necessary. In Haim's report we saw... Yes, let's see a portion of Haim's report and continue from there. In the report, we presented views of experts from Israel and abroad who claim the use of baby bottles and other products such as pacifiers and bathtub toys manufactured from polycarbonate should be restricted. The experts base their views on research conducted on animals. This research found a connection between the leakage of certain chemicals from the plastic products to a series of hormonal manifestations observed in recent years, such as decline in the age of puberty, decline in fertility, and an increase in certain types of cancer. Several years ago, the ministry recommended that all parents should avoid the use of overused worn-out bottles, but it didn't emphasize this recommendation. It now says that an official standard must be created, and it's likely that the use of polycarbonate will be prohibited. We should point out that not all baby bottles sold in Israel are made of polycarbonate containing bisphenol A. With regard to pacifiers, all products containing the dangerous chemical are illegal in Europe. Worried parents should note that products originating in the EU and marketed in Israel do not contain PVC. This is what is so amazing. The Ministry of Health admits they published a warning which did not reach the public. The question is, when parents come to a pediatrician, do you present them with this information as a matter of course? When they ask about it, of course. Did you yourself know about this, by the way? I learned about this only in the last few weeks. Not a matter of years, but, but I knew. Okay, so you see, the Ministry of Health claims they have been distributing this information for some time, but it does not reach the pediatricians. I understand you were also scrubbing the bottles. My baby is three months old, and he gets the best alternative, his mother. Sometimes we do feed him from a bottle that, according to the manufacturer, does not contain bisphenol A. So that's what you suggest that others should do? Yes, I do, actively as well. Well, it's clear that breastfeeding is the best solution for the baby. Best for many reasons. Now, if you like, there's another reason. Yes, there is another reason, because later they go over to bottles when they stop breastfeeding. We can't escape from it. It's also between the neighbors, the plastic bottles as well. I really think a reverse procedure is taking place, which I can understand is frustrating from a research point of view, when you realize that there are dangerous substances that are in use, but you are not dealing with the real danger. You have to deal with the economic lobby, the giant corporations that manufacture the substances. They tell you that if you cause the corporations to collapse, then people will lose their jobs. Somehow things have turned upside down in the modern world. Instead of us feeling secure knowing we are using safe products, we are always in doubt, waiting for the authorities to create a safe standard, and meanwhile the children are at risk. Our Ministry of Health does what it can in relation to the law. They can't prohibit a substance because there's no proof right now. If the FDA and other authorities haven't prohibited its use, then the FDA is the American Food and Drug Administration. Yes, and it hasn't been done in Europe either. We can't regulate the entire world. I'm not worried about the economic aspect. There's a legal aspect. I can't directly tell a company that they're doing something wrong if I have no direct proof. Another thing that disturbs me is about the connection between infertility and early puberty. This is completely untrue. No connection has been proved. We see all these occurrences worldwide, but we do not know their origin. But there is no argument regarding early puberty of the young generation. Of course there is. You can't prove, though, that these two are related. Just one last question. We saw in Chaim Rivlin's report that if you purchase a product that does not contain PVC, then you ensure that the product does not contain these substances, say not in bottles, but in pacifiers? Either you write or you purchase products that don't contain bisphenol. But surely it's the same thing. It's not exactly the same. It's a different substance but with similar qualities. Both should be examined. So we have to be careful. Thank you to you both.
It's difficult to be a parent these days. You have to read this and that and check that this doesn't contain this substance or that substance. Mainly you have to be aware. I have a gut feeling that I think it's very important. In the end, everything is unhealthy. Living is not a healthy occupation. Being outdoors, breathing polluted air. True, but that's a fatalistic attitude. A person should take responsibility over things he is able to.